In this presentation, we're going to be looking at another variance analysis problem. It's more difficult than the previous problem, and you'll see why, because it requires more of a more of a divergent thinking process, just because certain questions you can kind of go into it with a, an equation, plug in numbers, drive your answer, you're finished. But as you'll see in certain other questions, you might have to kind of manipulate the question a bit. Uh, and kind of use a more analytical approach to get your answer. So uh, we'll see what that's like in this question. There's the question, and the question has to do with a sign shop within Toronto. I thought I would make an illustration of Toronto to go with it. And let's go about starting this question. So the city of Toronto has a sign shop where street signs of all kinds are manufactured and repaired. The manager of the shop uses standards to judge performance. However, because the clerk mistakenly discarded some labor records, the manager has only partial data for April. She knows that the total direct labor variance was $18.55 favorable, and that the standard labor price was $12 per hour. Moreover, a recent pay raise produced an unfavorable labor price variance for April of $9.45. The actual hours of input were $17.50 find the actual labor price per hour. So this is going to be what is the actual price uh, and we're going to have to solve for that and this is going to be determine the standard hours allowed for the output achieved so this is going to be standard what is standard quantity. Now let's go about analyzing this question. So it says that the total direct labor variance was 1855 favorable. 1855 favorable. So this is the, the total direct labor variance. So if you remember, uh, the total the total variance can be divided into two different types of variance: the price variance and the usage variance. So uh, we know that the the price variance for April was 945 and that is an unfavorable amount so we should list that there as well and we should probably also write the equation for the price variance which is actual price minus standard price times actual quantity while the usage variance is actual quantity minus standard quantity times standard price. Okay, and it says that the standard labor price was $12 per hour, so let's start listing uh, some of our variables. Standard price, $12 an hour, and it says that the actual hours um, are $17.50, so we don't know our actual price, but we know our actual quantity, which is 1750 hours and our standard quantity we don't know either because that's what we're trying to find. So let's start and we have standard price and we have actual quantity so we're able to find out what the price variance is uh, by plugging in those numbers. And actually when I complete the price and the usage variances I'm going to treat favorable or actually I should say unfavorable amounts as positive amounts and favorable as negative. So um, actual price which we don't know minus standard price which is 12 times actual quantity which is 1750 is equal to um, unfavorable is represented by a positive number so I'm not going to add a negative symbol there. So to solve for this we're going to uh, divide the right side by 1750 and then add 12. So it's going to look like this. Actual price is equal to 945 divided by 1750 plus 12. So if we actually find the answer, 945 divided by 12 or 1750, 54 cents plus 12 and our actual price is twelve dollars and fifty four cents and this makes sense because uh, our standard price is twelve dollars an hour and our actual is twelve fifty four 
and since our actual is higher than our standard price, it makes sense why this yields uh, an unfavorable price variance. That's because our actual price was higher than our standard price. So right here we can write $12.54 and that's the answer for number one. And let's find out what the standard hours are um, for question number two. So start off in this question we know our actual quantity, we know our standard price, but we don't know what the usage variance is. So we're going to have to find that out and we're going to do that by um, recognizing that this 1855 is the, the net variance for price variance plus usage variance. So price variance plus usage variance is going to equal this amount. So if we do 945 plus 1855 we will have a 2800 favorable usage variance and this also makes sense because uh, if we have a usage variance of 2800 favorable we're going to subtract an unfavorable price variance of 945 and that's going to net a total variance of 1855. So let's just let's just go on by solving for standard quantity and we can have actual quantity at 1750 hours minus standard quantity times times twelve dollars is going to equal twenty eight hundred favorable and favorable is represented by a negative sign and the reason why I gave them opposing signs is because uh, unfavorable and favorable they're, they're polar opposites and we have to give them different signs because they are opposite of one another. One is a favorable, one is unfavorable. So that is why I did that. And if we actually were to rearrange this, we would get negative 2800 divided by 12 to get rid of that. And then we would subtract the 1750. So it's going to look like this. Negative standard quantity is equal to negative 2800 divided by 12 minus 1750. So negative standard quantity is equal to 2800 divided by 12. Oh actually I should negative 2800 divided by 12 uh, subtract 1750 and that's going to give us negative 1983 and then we divide by negative one to get a positive standard quantity and this will give us 1983 and that's going to be our standard quantity so 1983 hours and that's how we get the answer to question number two so that's how we derive those two answers and it's not uh, too too difficult it just requires you to understand what uh, total variance is comprised of and then solving things by rearranging the formulas. So if you have any questions make sure to leave them in the comments section. I'm going to go and make uh, the support department tutorial. I'll see you guys there.